Hello and welcome to Veterans Remember. I'm Dick Gooding, your host for Veterans Remember. And with me today is Don Lane, who is a veteran living here in Hopkinton, although he grew up in Maine. And Veterans Remember, as you know, uh, is an opportunity for us to converse with our veterans and hear their stories about vet, uh, things that they have done while they were in the service, some in war, some in, uh, in other than war. And we hope that we'll be able to give this uh, uh, audio-visual record of history uh, of the service of all of the Hopkinton veterans. So that's a little bit about what we're doing, Don, and, and maybe good. you can uh, uh, share with people <clears throat> about uh, where you grew up uh, and a little bit about, uh, about those days of your life. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Lewiston, Maine, basically. And then I went through school there and played ball for the town team and then played ball further on. As I got older, I was playing with grown men at 15 years old, so. Is that right? That's the truth. Oh. Yeah. I had great uh, learning curve. Is Lewiston say. a hotbed for baseball? It used to be. It mm -hmm. used to be the Auburn Aces were right there in Lewiston and Auburn. Lewiston and Auburn are two two towns that are right side by side and have a bridge between them. Twin cities, if you will. But, uh, yeah, we had a great park and we had great ball teams that came into our park and played against the Auburn Aces uh, teams with ball players on it like uh, the former owner of the Red Sox, a pad owner, Sullivan, played on a team. He was a catcher. And uh, Harry Aganis was playing on his team and a number of other ball mm. players. And we played against some of the uh, Negro teams that came into town, too. Uh, I batted against uh, Satchel Page, in fact, one time. Satchel Page? I wouldn't say oh, I goodness. batted against him, but I tried to bat against him. Yeah. <laughs> He could pitch. Now that was sure. uh, was that like a semi pro league? Yeah, it was semi pro. Yes. Uh, so, so, so you worked. So you worked during the day, and and then uh, yeah. came out to play baseball in the afternoons. Basically, basically, that's the truth. Although I was going to school at the time, high school, and I was playing for this uh, for the Auburn Aces, as I said, and some of the fellows got paid for it, but I didn't and never did. But uh, I was thought of to be an up and coming young fellow that was going to do well until I got indoctrinated with a guy sliding into second base and oh. I didn't uh, Is that go right? too what, far afterwards. What happened? You break a leg or? Yeah, he broke my leg, yeah. Oh, no kidding. Big man by the name of Luke Easter. Luke Easter, isn't yeah. he in the Hall of Fame? I, I don't know whether where he is or not. No, he, was a great, he, is. he was a great player for he the was. Cleveland Indians yeah, he uh, was, yeah. back in the, I guess, in the 50s, right? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, was uh, on the farm team for uh, tryouts and everything with, uh, with uh, the Dodgers at the time mm -hmm. down in Florida. And that was in Clearwater. And I went down there and uh, I was invited down and I went down and spent a couple of months working out with them and everything and learned a lot more about yeah. baseball. Well, how did you wind up getting into the, you went into the Navy uh, yeah. uh, back then. What brought you uh, into the Navy after being a baseball player? <laughs> and I assume you were doing, what were you doing for work at the time? I was working for my father. That was a good reason to go into the Navy. <laughs> so I went in the Navy in uh, 52 as a young fellow. And uh, I went to Bainbridge, Maryland, and they were, farming a baseball team, in fact. And I said, well, I can play ball. And they said, well, why don't you try out? So I went for tryouts, and I played that summer for Bainbridge, Maryland, instead of going to basic training. I didn't take any basic training. And uh, on the team I was on, there were, we had some fantastic ball players, these professional ball players who were doing their six-month tour of duty. Sure. And uh, Don Drysdale was one of them. Uh, it's, to me, it seems like it's a long time ago. Sure. And uh, we had other ball players besides Drysdale who were really great, and we did very well against the other military teams that we played against, like the uh, Quantico and places like that, and 
then we even went as far as uh, the Great Lakes and played against the Navy team up there. Oh, yeah, they, they're renowned for having oh, some good baseball teams had, out at Great Lakes. They a fine team, yes, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you, did, while you were in the Navy, did you do any Navy work? Yes, I did. <laughs> at the end of the season, I said, listen, i got to do something. They said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. What would you suggest? So they said, why don't you go to the signalman school? It was quartermaster signalman, it was called. Uh, so I went to that. That was 16 weeks of school before I'd go before uh, board ship during the winter. So I went there and graduated and went to, uh, from there to the uh, ship that I was going to go on, which was the AK-91, the Whitley. I went on that and went, as soon as I got aboard it, uh, in 53, we went on an operation called Main Brace to England and rode out a bunch of storms getting there, but we went over there to go into the Queen's Coronation. The Queen's Coronation? Yeah. Now, they didn't try to send you across the Pacific to, to uh, Korea. No, no. No? no I, I wasn't into that. <laughs> now, this, a, a signalman, is, is he like an electrician or uh, No, what? a signalman when I was in was uh, we sent messages by flashing light and oh, semaphore and such as that. And we were up on the bridge and we navigated the ships and such. Hmm. Was that the end of your baseball career in the Navy or? No, I no? had many other. So you still, were, you still uh, stayed with baseball in the Navy? Were you uh, stationed at Bainbridge? No, I mean, I, I shouldn't have said it that way. Uh, I didn't uh, play any more baseball in the Navy. I, I did not. I, I waited until I got out of the Navy and when I got out of the Navy, I went home again, and my brother was going to go into the Army, so I decided to go into the Army at the same time with him. You went into the Army instead of going back to the Navy? Yeah. Well, were they recruiting you to play baseball in the Army, too? That happened a little later on in oh. life. <laughs> but uh, I went uh, in the Army, and uh, we went, my brother and I both went to the 82nd Airborne Division down at Fort Bragg and graduated from there. And then uh, I wanted to... Uh, go overseas again if it was possible and I mm -hmm. got uh, orders to go to Germany. So I went to Germany and got into Germany in 55, actually 56, I retired from mm -hmm. the Navy, not retired, I got out of the Navy in 55. But uh, in 56 when I was in Frankfurt, Germany is where I was at. I learned that they had great baseball. And were you teams. A, a, still in, sort of in the Signal Corps? Is that was that your was army work, trade? Yeah, I was going to work in the uh, communication centers. I see. That was the difference, but that's same thing. And I had a high clearance and all, so uh, that's where I got more into baseball because we had a general there by the name of Van Brunt who really liked to have a good baseball team and football team. And once you get into baseball and you could play football, then you were all right. Well, it's funny. Uh, uh, I played baseball in, in, uh, both in college and then when I was in the Army as well in Germany and was involved with a local team that I helped put together that was uh, had a couple of uh, drafted recruits from the Pirates and the Yankees and, oh, yeah. the, and the Indians. And uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the service has some great athletic teams. Oh. Uh, one of our veterans, Paul Phipps, mm -hmm. who, who uh, used to own Phipps Insurance Agency, yeah. his son does now, uh, was very active as a, as a ball player in the service. And mm -hmm. I think there have been a number of other people in the service. And, uh, uh, you know, it's not just uh, guns and uh, knives no. and things of that nature. No. And it's a great opportunity. It is. So, so you... Uh, uh, you got onto a team when when you got over to Germany. Yeah. Did you did you know that that was going to happen, or did that just sort of come up out I, of the blue? I sort of knew something was going to happen like that because I'd been speaking to uh, some people who had come from Germany, and they said, "Well, Don, you know, they get great baseball teams over there too." And I said, "Well, it's interesting. You know, who should I talk to?" And when I got over to Germany, it was in the winter, and boy, we had snow up to the armpits, and I left uh, the ball, I uh, left the Bonhoeff there by the train station right. and uh, got to my, to the concern I was going to be in and uh, I talked to them and they said, oh yeah, it'll come out around April, they'll start the team up and such and you know, you can 
try out, you know, we can't promise you anything, but you can try out. So I tried out in April and uh, made the team and played for General Van Brunt in April through August and then football team after that, went out for that and played for them there. We had great teams. So you played both football and baseball? Yes. Yeah. Well, you didn't get much time in between to squeeze in any Army work, did you? Not a lot. But that wasn't, <laughs> we were giving ourselves to the people, you know, to the audience. And, and did they wind the, up, uh, did you get regular promotions while you were uh, on the baseball team, even though you weren't really? A, it wasn't, uh, you didn't get too many promotions in, no. in that respect. Uh, no, I didn't. But you, uh, and, and how long were you in Germany? Uh, At that time, I was in Germany from 55 until 59. Oh, wow. In fact, I met my wife uh, in 58, and we got married in 59, later part of 59. And she's a, she's a German lady? Yes, she is, yeah. And her name is Helga? Yeah, Helga, yeah. And how, did you, how were you fortunate enough to meet Helga? Well, I was going out with her best friend. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went to uh, a, a function that they had for for uh, where she was working, and uh, I met her, and we got along very well, and then decided to get married later. Oh, well, that's on. that's great. Now, yeah. uh, I, I I guess uh, in addition to playing baseball, I think the army, mm -hmm. uh, knowing the army as I do, they had some other things they wanted you to do too. Oh you, yeah, you you uh, you served in Vietnam a couple of times, right? Yeah, 1965 and uh, 19 through 65, from November 65 until uh, November 66. Before you went uh, to Vietnam the first time, uh, uh, you had other assignments? In the, w yes, when I, when I left Germany mm -hmm. and came back to the States in 59, I no longer was, I was hardly in the States while my furniture hadn't even arrived into the States. I got a call uh, from the Pentagon asking me if I, uh, still was interested in playing ball. And I said, yes, I was. And they said, well, in Paris, they're looking for uh, a second baseman. In Paris? In Paris. <laughs> you just gotten back from Germany. I got back in uh, November, and I'm talking to them in December. It was either that or go to Alaska. That was basically what they said to me. And I said, I don't want to go to Alaska. Well, would you go to Paris? I said, surely I'd go to Paris. So I went. Was Helga able to come with you too? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and what? Everything you, was first class. Were you assigned to a unit, or were you? Uh, no, uh, really I was like assigned to corporate headquarters or something. Precisely. Or, yeah. yeah, I was working for Gen uh, another general, Norstead, who was commander of all of European command, and uh, I met with uh, his aide, and we got into Paris, and they had us already set up in a hotel. And we was going to stay in the hotel for a month because I was going, my wife was going to be staying in the hotel for a month because I was going to be going down a road to Spain to get into condition to play ball with the rest of the team. So I went to Road to Spain, then came back, and we, they'd got me a house in the meantime. So we lived in a very nice area and just outside of Paris called La Vizine. A whole park of flowers. Beautiful place. <laughs> Beautiful house I had, too. But anyways, we did. I did that and played ball for them and played football for them too. And then uh, came the next year, I was having problems with my leg, but I wanted to play ball, but I couldn't really play football. So I played baseball for another year for them. And then in Paris, they didn't have a, 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 any teams for youngsters, you know, like. 12, 13 year olds sure. like Babe Ruth. So I farmed the Babe Ruth in Paris. Oh, and wow. I was really proud of that. Was that for uh, uh, French kids or for the Americans? No, for Americans. Okay. Yeah, I had all Americans. I had like the president of uh, Exxon, I had his son, uh, president of IBM, I had his son. All, um, all the different. Uh, families that had mm -hmm. children over there, and we formed uh, Paris uh, Little League. 
Well, baseball certainly sounds like it opened up a lot of doors for you in the service. Oh, uh, it did. Uh, yeah, although uh, you went to the Ashra Valley back in uh, 65. Yeah. I don't imagine there was much baseball going on at the Ashra Valley. Uh, not in 65. I went to sock train in 65. Oh, sock train. Yeah. Yep. Down, the Delta. down in the Delta? Yeah, down the Delta. Now, were you uh, still with uh, an Airborne Brigade? or I was with the 5th Special Forces. The 5th Special Forces? Yeah. And uh, you had joined them down at Bragg? Bragg, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, were you assigned in Sock Trang, were you assigned to an A camp or were you... Uh, I was in an A camp, but I had a team, a uh, 15-man 15 team, and uh, we would go out on missions and come back, you know, and... With luck, uh, <laughs> most mostly, did, and you had Vietnamese. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, forces yeah. along with yeah, you. Yeah, we did. Uh, the A camps, uh, uh, which are all along the border, of uh, with Cambodia and and yeah. uh, Laos, mm -hmm. uh, certainly were uh, a very important part of uh, our efforts in Vietnam at the time. I they know were, I have a, yeah. a roommate of mine, a been best friend, who was uh, unfortunately killed at Doc Peck, which is up uh, off I know where it is, near yeah. Kontum. Yeah. And uh, those camps were pretty critical from a, more from a communication standpoint than mm -hmm. from a fighting standpoint yeah. because they were, for the most part, monitoring troop flow f from mm -hmm. North Vietnam into, into wherever that area yeah. is. And uh, in Sok Trang, were you uh, again? You were you were signaled, so you were involved with, I assume, with some of the, the snooping that went on, and uh, yeah, as far as gathering intelligence. Precisely. Yeah. And uh, we were working with my group was working with the 25th uh, Vietnamese Division, and uh, we uh, would be trying to get people out of certain areas that they were in and by their ignorance got into the problems and sure. we went down and got them out and worked that way. And uh, I never took any R&R &R when I was there my first tour in Vietnam. But Helga uh, must not have been very happy about that. Oh, she was in Germany. She stayed in Germany oh, with did her she? folks yeah, yeah. for that tour. Yeah. yeah. Now, after you, uh, so you were in Sok Trang for a year? Yes, for a year. And uh, was there a lot of act, uh, uh, action that was going on? Yeah, at, there was a lot that? of action yeah. going on then, yeah. Yeah, I had 15 men in my, as I said before, in my group. And uh, we and what, didn't do what too were much. You? Were you an E7 or E6? Or E7. An E7 at that time? Yeah. So that's what, a master sergeant? Yeah. Uh, sergeant first class. Sergeant first class, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we went, uh, I went back to the States and uh, I actually went back to Germany. That's when I get to go to Grafenbeer. Oh, so you went back for a little more baseball in between tours in Vietnam. Exactly, Dick. Oh, man, <laughs> boy, I'll tell you. I, I guess I missed the boat. I, yeah. you know, I, I did play that baseball for uh, two years. For what it was worth. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. But mm -hmm. so you went back to and Grafenbeer is. Uh, I went back to Grafenbeer and uh, became the manager of their baseball team and built the baby baseball team in Grafenbeer, and uh, we uh, did very very well. And I worked for a person by the name of Colonel Baltas at the time, and I was post signal. Also, that was my mm -hmm. job when I wasn't playing ball, and uh, had a lot of Germans working for me and and Americans, and uh, that was a great tour of duty. I stayed there for three years, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed it. I always said there was the best kept secret in the military, and everyone says Grafenbeer. What do you want to do in Grafenbeer, <laughs> right? <laughs> But uh, yeah, we were talking earlier, and my experiences in Grafenbeer yeah. weren't nearly as nice as yours. No. That was the uh, training area for the artillery group that I was in, and mm -hmm. it seemed like we always went there in the dead of winter. And I know it. It's and, awful. Uh, just a miserable place. One base, one uh, field area was called Nancy. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yep. Yeah, I knew you would because <laughs> that's a rough place to be. And yeah, it, wasn't it cer a... certainly isn't the most fun place no, to no. be. Now, no. you went uh, uh, from Germany, you went back for another uh, another tour in, in Vietnam. Yes, I did. I went back and I was up in the Asha Valley this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was another experience. 
Well, the Oshawa Valley back in, uh, uh, before you were there, and I think it was 66, uh, was probably the first serious uh, military action between regular North Vietnamese troops and the right. Americans. It was. And that was kind of a, that was a real difficult time, as I recall. Yeah. And, uh, it, didn't, it probably didn't change much when you were there because no. I know most of the places we'd, we, we'd win and then uh, leave and then they'd go back in. And yeah. What, what was the Asha Valley like? Well, you, one, were you in an A camp there too? Yes, I was. At, at the Asha A camp? Asha, Asha A camp, exactly. Yeah. And uh, what my job and the people who were working with me's job was, was to go out on different missions and see if we could find prisoner of war camps and stuff like this and we might stay there in an area for a short time and and then go back to a base camp mm -hmm. but uh, I uh, did enough jumps over in that area too we all jumped a lot of areas a lot oh, of so that you area. maintained your jump yeah your jump status the yeah. whole time exactly. were, you, were you jumping as units yeah, we was jumping as 15-man team, and uh, we try to get close to a village and see what the villages were doing with the North Vietnamese, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I made enough jumps in the service, and I never had a problem. I always liked them. But we were jumping out of helicopters a lot then at low level. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know when you when you're in charge of a stick, which is the charge of the group that you're going to go out of the helicopter in, you tell them all, all right, you check the guy in front of you and the guy behind you checks you and the whole bit. Well, being the last man in, I didn't think one day and I checked the guy in front of me and I said, all right, get out of here. And then I get to the window and I went out, but I forgot to hook up my straps. Uh oh. And I went this way and. My chute went this way, and my right foot caught on the edge of my straps, so I went down and I could see the skyline, and I figured I must be about 30 feet from the ground. I'll kick out of this. But I was more like probably 40 feet from the ground, and I landed in an area with all stumps and everything. So I had complete right side was purple, psychedelic, and everything else. And oh, wow. But I didn't get any broken bones out of it. I just got and, banged and you up. You didn't lose off. contact with your with no, your unit. No, no, because the unit was right right near me there. Yeah. No, we were fine. But you know, when you're jumping at that time in a special forces group, you're carrying a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're carrying over 200 pounds of equipment. Right. So when these people tell me at a breakfast that, uh, well, yeah, they got to carry over 100 pounds of equipment. Well, I don't think too much about that. I just say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> So I was going to, how this all came about really was I, I was telling the guys I was leaving for, when I got back to the base, I was going to be going down to Nha Trang and catching a flight to Hawaii. I was going to meet my wife in Hawaii on r and So when I met her in Hawaii, I was still black and blue and psychedelic, as I said. And she started screaming, oh my goodness, it's alive. what are they doing to you? I said, well, you know, I'm just doing my job. War isn't too much fun. No, no, yeah, <laughs> not really. Yeah. And I imagine knowing that area, uh, that was a major infiltration route. So it I really assume, was. I you assume know. you saw some North oh, yeah. Vietnamese regulars. Saw a lot of it, yeah. Yeah. Now, after you left Vietnam, uh, I, I assume it was a full, another year, full year term? Yes. You came back to the Boston area? Is yeah, it, I came it? back to Boston area. I was out on Summer Street in recruiting. Oh, it used to be the call the Boston Army Base. Yeah, right. Yeah. What an awful job. <laughs> well, but anyways, I, I did it for a year, and I said, that's enough. I had a, I had a very close friend. His name was uh, Captain Mike Aiello. He was there probably around the same time. He was yeah, in, I, know, I know the name. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, you two must have been, at the, must yeah. have been there at the same time, because this would yes. have been 60, probably 69, yeah. 70. Yeah, exactly, 69. Yeah, he, yeah, he finished Aiello. his... Yeah, I know who he was. Yeah, he's, my yeah. he's one of my closest friends. Really? Yeah. Goodness sakes. Well, it's a small world. Oh, it is. So, yeah. so you, uh, uh, you, did you finish up your tour yeah, while you were in did, Boston? I uh, did one tour in Boston, and that was it. And then, then you I retired. retired. Then I retired, yeah. And uh, I assume that you had four years with the Navy and, and then the rest with, with the Army? 18 with the Army, yeah. 
and probably half of that you were playing ball. Well, I was playing for for the military, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what brought you to Hopkins, and Don? Well, when I retired from the service, uh, I retired out of South Weymouth because we had quarters in South Weymouth mm -hmm. for the families who were working for the recruiting command. And then uh, I came, I bought a home over in Holliston and uh, lived in Holliston for 15 years and then I was doing a lot of traveling because I was in, I was working for Children's for about eight years as a communications manager. And then I wanted to get into the uh, industry, so I went to work for digital. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a lot of traveling overseas, everywhere from Taiwan to you name it. And I'd come home and my lawn would be this high and I'd have to be mowing grass and doing all these different things. And I had a house in Holliston, so. I just decided it was time to do something else and as far as home life was concerned. So we bought a condo over here in Hopkinton. And now you've been here, what, 15, 20 years? Yeah, 15, nearly 15 years, yeah. Well, I guess you're going to stay. Probably. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, we're certainly glad to have you here and uh, yeah. we're delighted to hear about your experiences in the Army and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the Navy. And, uh, you know, it uh, sounds like you had a great career, and uh, we really want to thank you very much for, uh, for sharing your experiences with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, finish up by, again, thanking Don Lane, and uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Veterans Remember. Tune in to HCAM News for complete and up-to-date coverage of Hopkinton. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 6 p.m. for our latest newscast from the HCAM studios. From high school sports and governmental coverage to community affairs and culture, if it's Hopkinton, HCAM News keeps you informed. Between newscasts, visit our website at hcam.tv for late-breaking news and expanded coverage of our top stories. Tune in to Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30.